President Doris Lloyd Hart and Mr. Housen, Heads of State and Government, Deputy Heads of State and your spouses, Heads of International Organizations, Dr. Klaus Schwab and Mrs. Schwab, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm delighted to come to Davos. The small, beautiful town in the Alps is indeed an important window through which we can take the pulse of the global economy. People from around the world come here to exchange ideas and insights which will broaden their vision. This makes the WEF annual meeting a cost-effective brainstorming event, which I would like to call Schwab Economics. As you know, in 10 days' time, the Chinese will celebrate the Lunar Chinese New Year. Around this time, it is all buzz in China. People visit their relatives and friends. In this way, they will strengthen their bond and friendship. So this time, my wife and I and the other members of the delegation come to Davos to pay our respect, to say New Year greetings to Switzerland and the whole world. We should follow the general trend, proceed from our respective national conditions, and embark on the right pathway of integrating into economic globalization at the right pace. We should strike a balance between efficiency and equity to ensure that different countries, different social strata, and different groups of people all share in the benefits of economic globalization. This is a responsibility that leaders of our times must take on. And the people around the world expect nothing less from us. We must redouble efforts to develop global connectivity to enable all countries to achieve interconnected growth and share prosperity. We must remain committed to developing free trade and investment, promote trade and investment liberalization and facilitation through opening up and say no to protectionism. Pursuing protectionism is just like locking oneself in a dark room while wind and rain may be kept outside, so are light and air. No one will emerge as a winner in a trade war. We should adhere to multilateralism to uphold the authority and efficacy of multilateral institutions. We should honor promises and abide by rules. One should not select or bend rules as he sees fit. The Paris Agreement is a hard-won achievement, which is in keeping with the underlying trend 
of global development. All signatories should stick to it instead of walking away from it, as this is a responsibility we must assume for future generations. We should foster a culture that values diligence, frugality, and enterprise, and respects the fruits of hard work of all. Priority should be given to addressing poverty, unemployment, the widening income gap, and the concerns of the disadvantaged to promote social equity and justice. It is important to protect the environment while pursuing economic and social progress so as to achieve harmony between men and nature and harmony between men and society. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development should be implemented to realize balanced development across the world. We Chinese know only too well what it takes to achieve prosperity, so we applaud the achievements by others, and we wish them a better future. We are not jealous of others' success. And we will not complain about others who have benefited so much from the great opportunities presented by China's development. We will open our arms to the people of other countries and welcome them aboard the express train of China's development. World history shows that the road of human civilization has never been a smooth one, and that mankind has made progress by surmounting difficulties. No difficulty, however daunting, will stop mankind from advancing. When encountering difficulties, we should not complain about ourselves, blame others, lose confidence, or run away from responsibilities. Instead, we should join hands and rise to the challenge. History is created by the brave. Let us boost confidence, take actions, and work together for a bright future. Thank you.